Hello and welcome to the Trading Bell. I'm Noakip Kamboy and today we are talking matters credit information. Well, in this recovery environment, the issue is can we get proper credit information and utilize that information for the betterment of our credit ecosystem? Well, I'll be having a chat with Jared Getenga, the CEO of Credit Information Sharing Association of Kenya. They'll be telling us the issue about credit information. Starting off, uh, I know in the minds of many Kenyans, when you talk about credit information, where we relate with our credit information is always at the CRB level, when I'm blacklisted. But for starters, what is credit information and why is it important? Thank you very much for having me and thanks for that question. <clears throat> Credit information is important because um, it helps especially the lender to know whom he's dealing with. Um, credit is an opportunity somebody has to use money that is not theirs. And we should give certain benefits to the lender so that you don't just walk in somewhere and get money. You'd never do it even in your estate if you go to the shop and you just want your some bread on credit, the shopkeeper will be interested in knowing, are you the new guy in the block who moved in or do you live far away? Okay. And the more you interact with the shopkeeper, the easier it is over time for them to give you credit. Okay. So it is a natural expectation of a credit relationship that information is important. So the shopkeeper will want to know, you know, does they, do, they, do they earn, do they live well as a family, is there a good relationship in that home, because it matters whether they will get their, their money back. So whenever you have to use money that is not yours, expect the lender to be interested in some information. Mm -hmm. So in the infrastructure of an economy, this information is stored in a credit reference bureau. Now, a credit reference bureau is not the only important infrastructure in the evolution of an economy's credit market. There are many other pieces of infrastructure like collateral registries, which help economies to improve credit guarantee schemes. So there is a list of three or four critical pieces of infrastructure that make a country improve on its credit performance. So credit reference bureaus were established and are established across the world. Especially in real strong economies, credit reference bureaus are extremely powerful. And so just that's important to say because when we think of a credit reference bureau as a blacklist, we have got the whole story wrong. Mm -hmm. For one, because the most developed countries have really invested in effective credit reference bureaus. There are two types of bureaus largely. One is the, um, what is called Public Credit Registry, PCR. And the other one is a Private Credit Bureau or CRB. Some countries, because of the importance of the CRB, have actually established it in the central banks. So there are countries, Germany has a very, very established central bank-based CRB, as you would call it. Mm -hmm. The same Germany has allowed, it's a dual system in Germany, so apart from the Central Bank Bureau, they have a private bureau. In other countries, it's only central banks that run bureaus. Yet in other countries, it's only private, like Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's only private, three bureaus. Some countries choose to take one, just kind of a monopoly, because even if it's private, they control the entry. But in Kenya, we chose to open it up and have competition because we are a free market. Okay. So the credit bureau then is a place where you can go and get objective information. That's the, the idea. Okay. So instead of me relying on or having to look around as a lender, you know, I want to look at your accounts, I want to consult you, you know, send somebody to check whether you really live where you say you live, the bureau establishes first the identity of the person because again people change identity so or they borrow in different names so the bureau collects the information that you you gave to a circle versus what you gave to a bank in terms of identity so if i used two names in one place three names in another 
two different, two other names in, in, in an MFI, they take that and try to confirm that this is the same person. They check with the government uh, registry of identity and, and then they collate that. So that's one of the roles they play, just to confirm that this is the same person because we share names. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, you know, you might be mistaken to be the other Noah mm -hmm. who, who failed to pay their loan. So a bureau is good because then if you pay your loans, you will not get mixed up. Your record will not be mixed up with somebody who didn't pay because you have the same name. Okay. So they try to establish identity of the person, they get the ID, passport, and they put that together. It's a very sophisticated system. The other thing they look at now is your history. Um, they try to establish what is your character in terms of loan repayment. And it is not to say that if you failed to pay a loan or an installment sometime, that becomes the end of you. That's why, of course, scoring comes in. What kind of person are you historically? And how can that be projected to your future behavior? Mm -hmm. So there is a science behind it, data science, that is used by credit bureaus right. to kind of predict the future, give some element of comfort yes. to the lender, especially because most lenders are not even using, some are using their own money, mm -hmm. others are using depositors' money okay. to lend. So we really need to be sensitive to the need of a credit bureau. Definitely, and, and I'm glad you're able to establish the definitions for starters. So we, when you talk about CRB, it's not just about, uh, you know, listing defaulters, but having all the information that a lender needs to effectively lend to you, uh, which is very important. Now, I mean, uh, when the mobile applications, yeah, mobile lending applications came into the market, mm -hmm. we saw a spike of uptake of of credit yeah. and that opened a new can of worms in regards <laughs> to matters collecting credit information yeah. and uh, properly mm -hmm. utilizing that yeah. and the question that comes in this regard default rates have been so high and therefore the listings yeah, yeah. you've seen the government come in with credit repair yeah. uh, you know uh, framework which is very important but for starters um, has has data credit information been helpful in trying to resolve this issue of non-performing loans especially from mobile lending yeah it's good you mentioned that mobile lending uh, really grew and extended uh, the opportunities for many kenyans to access credit and i would like to tie that to the first question you raised about credit information mm -hmm. because what is it that caused mobile lenders to be so comfortable lending to us so easily, again it was credit information. So we need to give credit where it's due because credit information helps digital lenders to make quick decisions without meeting us face to face. So they have a certain algorithm based on credit information that enables them to say, yeah, this person, uh, based on either his identity or their um, credit history, are good to, to lend and uh, so we are grateful that uh, this country uh, has been very innovative in the use of uh, access to credit and mobile uh, lending has really grown but in all lending environments there are defaulters and they are good payers so uh, you know the conversation needs to be fair it needs to be balanced in fact there are more good payers than they are defaulters in, in our economy. Mm -hmm. And that's true for both uh, traditional lending as well as mobile-based lending. Mm -hmm. So the information that goes to the Bureau is both positive and negative. And the minority are the ones who default. And we cannot say that information should not be disclosed. Um, and so for the sake of mobile lenders, both those who pay and those who don't found themselves in the system. Mm -hmm. Now the ease with which we get credit on mobile tends to uh, make people feel like it, that's the ease with which they should default. Mm -hmm. Even people who can pay. Mm -hmm. So there's a temptation not to pay. And therefore when that information goes to the Bureau then you find a lot of uh, hue and cry 
Ulabalu mm -hmm. about blacklisting. Mm -hmm. This word blacklisting, if it were possible, should be eliminated from the dictionary, yes. especially when it comes to credit reference bureaus. It's not there. I've gone to credit bureaus and I've asked them, where is this blacklist that people talk about? It doesn't exist. There is nobody in Kenya who is blacklisted. There is no, there is no list called a blacklist in a bureau. So those who are unable to access credit after defaulting, now, what do you call that? I'll, call, I'll come to the two problems mm -hmm. that have really affected our mechanism in Kenya. <clears throat> um, those who default traditionally should just have a lower score. And there are people, there are lenders, who are interested in lending to uh, low-risk customers at higher interest. They make, they make their, if they can guarantee themselves that this guy is going to pay anyway, perhaps by putting in stronger terms of credit, maybe asking for security. Some people specialize in low-risk customers and they make their money there. So the problem that has caused, that the bureaus have, have suffered is twofold. It's caused by two factors. One, there are lenders who have definitely um, mistreated defaulters. They have simply said they don't want to see them. To be fair to those lenders, they have a risk appetite that does not entertain, you know, defaulters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every lender defines their risk appetite. There are lenders who are interested in low-risk customers, and maybe we have not spoken a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And so blacklist, I say, doesn't exist because there are lenders who would be interested in who has a bit of a low risk and I can charge a higher interest because nobody else is going to be excited about lending to them. So if I offer credit to such people at a high, at a high interest rate, I'll make my money mm -hmm. and probably a higher percentage of them will default. So I've taken the, uh, the, the, the risk of, on that. And those who will pay, I would, because they really need credit, they have been defaulters, but they will pay. I'll make money because I'll charge them higher than I would normally do. So the other problem, um, so problem number one are lenders who do not educate their consumers. They simply say, I've seen your credit report, you are blacklisted, out you go. Mm -hmm. That's not the attitude that we should, we should simply say, my, my, my risk appetite, you know, draws the line at say 600 credit score yeah. and because you don't meet that try the next lender that is really the spirit it's not that you're blacklisted the other cause of the problem that bureaus have uh, the image of the bureaus is from le borrowers who are over enthusiastic not to pay loans and they they are, they are in this economy i have worked in in, in what is now called kdic Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, which to put together, which takes all the default, all the collapse institutions. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the loan book of all these collapse, there are more than 20 in the last, especially in the 90s. If you look at the loan books of all these collapsed institutions, you will see common names across. They are called serial defaulters. Mm -hmm. They go to banks, they borrow with no intention to repay. And at that time, and that's, you should compare the 90s and now, that you don't see a lot of bank collapses today. Because in the 90s, there was no credit reference bureau. Mm -hmm. So these lenders would entertain a borrower, not aware that they have defaulted in five other banks. So I saw that. I saw how the commonality of, of defaulters, uh, you know, spreads across. Now, we should be very grateful that we introduced CRBs mm -hmm. because depositors lost their money in the 90s, huge amounts of money in those 20 plus institutions. That's not a common phenomenon today because banks check to see whether you are a serial defaulter before they lend. And so we don't have a lot of people losing their money today and we should give credit to the CRBs. Right. Now, I was making the point that borrowers who have that tendency are the ones who are spoiling the name of the CRBs because they would love a situation 
where a bank cannot check mm -hmm. whether you have defaulted elsewhere. I'm not saying everybody who has a bad impression of CRBs is a serial defaulter, but those ones have fueled the image, those category of borrowers who are interested in cross 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 borrowing and de cross defaulting mm -hmm. have fueled this image about uh, CRBs being terrible. Okay. Now the government is doing its best and we are uh, about to talk about its, its, its efforts now mm -hmm. to try and balance yes. between the interests of the lender and the interests of the borrower. And okay. I think that's where we should be going. Definitely. Uh, that's very important. I mean credit repair framework, it's one that First of all, in the campaign season, it was brought up very much because mm -hmm. CRB listing was one of the huge issues yeah. uh, in the campaign period. Once the government came in, they said, OK, we're going to deal with this issue. Now, there's that notion that I will just be delisted from CRB. Mm -hmm. but the government comes and says, we're going to give you six months. I work with uh, the person that you borrowed from. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll create a framework to make sure that uh, at least you're repaying. And also you are discounted sort of to, sort of to incentivize you yeah. uh, to clear yourself from uh, the CRB list. Yeah. Uh, what do you take of, of this move by the government? It's an excellent move. Um, one, because government has been quite supportive of the CRB mechanism. You know, the temptation or the expectation of many is that the new government was going to probably remove the whole concept. That would have been terrible for this country because this country is respected and ranked very highly across the world for the efforts that we are making around the CRB framework. Many investors look to see a number of criteria before they move into a country. And even if they are not coming as lenders, they're just coming as investors, they need to understand the infrastructure, the credit and financial infrastructure of a country. And where there are no credit reference bureaus, a number of investors shy of. Mm -hmm. So this government has been very sensitive. I think they have understood, they know the importance of the CRB, mm -hmm. but they have been very, very concerned about the misuse of the CRB, especially by lenders who simply do not want to entertain mm -hmm. a borrower who has a negative score in the bureau. Okay. So uh, that's, that's a big plus for the government. Uh, they have not accepted this blacklisting of CRBs. You mm. know, people have treated CRB as uh, such a negative thing that when you see CRB, you want to kill it. But this government, I think, has been extremely supportive. Second thing that I, I appreciate about this uh, new move is that uh, borrowers, as I said, you need to balance. Borrowers need some sympathy. There are borrowers, especially in the context of COVID, before COVID, I don't think such a discussion would have been really appropriate to try and repair, mm -hmm. um, you know. But in the context of COVID, it is a perfect arrangement. Um, so those who are being given an opportunity here, are at least for now, it is the digital borrowers mm -hmm. who took short-term loans and were affected very adversely by COVID especially. And uh, the, the, the empathy of government here is to see, can we give them an opportunity to improve their score? Mm -hmm. Maybe the lender would not have given them such an opportunity, but government has intervened, engaged with the lenders, so that we can restructure. Okay. There was restructuring in 2020 mm -hmm. of many, many loans, mm -hmm. but now we have come to the micro loans. Mm -hmm. We've come to the micro loans and uh, government is saying, take advantage of the next six months. Yes. The lender will give you a discount on your, on your credit, on your outstanding loan. That mm -hmm. is a fantastic offer. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you get 50% at least of your loan discounted, you won't ever have to pay that. I think that's a great offer. And then on the balance, pay it over six months. At the end of the six months, you should have repaired your credit history. Even now, there is repair if you take the 50% offer quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there is an immediate um, reclassification okay. of the credit. So that improves the score. What do you think these digital lenders are thinking? That is close to 15 billion shillings, just uh, what they were owed, you letting see, that go. I think they need to embrace this for this reason that that money was difficult to collect anyway. What's the point of having 
uh, huge figures in your balance sheet that you cannot collect. But when you give a good incentive, you collect half of it, I think they should take it positively. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Remember, these are non-performing loans. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they are NPLs. <laughs> so better get something yeah. rather than nothing. Rather than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough one for the lenders. I can, I can fool them. Yeah. And uh, right now, even with these digital lenders, uh, you know, uh, the regulator yeah. has been, uh, you know, giving them permits to operate. A number of them have not yet received. Correct. Yes. It's important to clarify mm -hmm. that the program that the central bank announced recently is not really yet to all digital lenders. Mm -hmm. This is digital, these are commercial banks, microfinance banks and mortgage finance companies that offer digital credit. Mm -hmm. That's where this program is targeting at the moment. Okay. So those lenders have had a conversation with government and they have agreed on this. So it is not something that government is imposing on them. Mm -hmm. um, it is not yet, uh, at least for now, uh, a conversation affecting the other digital lenders that were, for example, applying recently for, for, for licenses. Oh, this has been a, quite an enlightening conversation. Mr. Jared Getenga, our CEO, Credit Information Sharing Association of Kenya, popularly known as CIS Kenya, saying that it's important, credit information, is actually a critical block, you know, the cornerstone when it comes to improving the credit, you know, the credit environment of the nation. And he says that in this period where small businesses are rating, formalize, formalize your business so that it gets its own uh, rating uh, different from your scoring. And uh, that helps businesses grow, you're able to acquire credit. Uh, but most importantly, on an individual level, he touched on the you know, credit repair framework, which is also very important uh, to make sure that people are getting off, are given an opportunity to get off CRB. Well, that's been our conversation. I'm Noki Kimboy. I leave you with the markets.